I push my bike to work almost every day. I like it when it's quiet in the morning. It helps me think. What do you do when you're looking for new ideas? When you're trying to create something that is entirely new? I've already produced a video here. I've produced a video over there. Your brain is the most amazing and creative storyteller and idea generator that evolution has ever created. But it doesn't work that way when you're sitting at your desk. Friedrich Nietzsche famously said, never trust an idea that came to you while you were sitting. In this video, I'd like to explain to you how you can actually get better ideas by moving out and away from your desk. Oh yeah, and of course, this wall. Let me take you back to 2019, because that's when I first started realizing how powerful walking is. I was writing a lot of articles back then, and I was always looking for the perfect image to support the message in the article. But I never found good images in all the stock photos and anywhere on social media, because I always had a very clear idea in my head what the image should do. And I had just written an article about how our superstition, how our beliefs shape the way we experience reality. And then I went for a walk. And then I witnessed this guy. This guy walking past a lion in front of the residence in Munich, rubbing the face of the lion. And you might know what that is. This is something that people do because they think they can make a wish and this will influence their fate. Took a photo, went away with it, had the perfect image for my article. A couple of days later, I wrote an article about something called the fat smoker syndrome. That's a term coined by an American author. The idea of the syndrome is that it's so hard for us to leave the paths that we're already on. It's so hard for us to take a step left or take a step right and leave the tracks that seem already prepared for us. And I had no idea how to display that, how to show that on an image. And then I went for a walk <laughs> and I walked past the circus in Munich. At first I walked past the circus and nothing happened. But a couple of steps later I realized, wait, there was just something that triggered my mind. And then I went back and saw this little hook. And this hook is actually easily overlooked because all it does is it helps to keep the door open when someone is driving in and out of the circus. Over the years, whenever the hook fell back on the wall, it created this mark on the wall. And then I thought, isn't this amazing? Because this describes exactly what I'm trying to say in the article. It's so hard for us to leave our trodden tracks because we feel like we're connected to the top like this hook. And then I was sold. I started walking almost every single day. In 2020, I did in fact walk every single day, every morning before work, even though I worked from home. I went out every morning for at least 30 minutes and did a little walk in my area to return home with a few new ideas that I could do something with. Now I don't work from home anymore because I have a studio and that is here. My home is in this area and every morning I walk to the studio. I push my bike here because later I want to get home quicker but in the morning I walk. So I will walk in somewhere in this area. And in the last couple of months, I've created a ton of videos in that area. So I've created one here talking about competence because there was an e-scooter there that I used for the story. I created another one also in that area where I talk about future skills. 
I've created one here in front of the fire department because the fire department reminded me of how the brain works or actually how the brain doesn't work. And when I was there, they actually went out, uh, which was great, which was great timing, but by accident. I have created a video here recently. I've already used this a couple of times in my videos because I like the graffiti and I really like this container. Oh, and then of course, this whole area here is where my studio is with all those fancy looking containers. I've used this in my videos, well, I don't know how often. <laughs> and I could go on like this with the whole map of Munich, because around the English Garden or some other spots in the city center, I've already used in my videos. What does this have to do with the way the brain works? Your brain has two general different operating modes. One is called the focus mode. The focus mode you can imagine like a list mode. You take items from a list, one after another, and then you do something with them. It's like a, it's like a stack of paper. In the focus mode, you will take one after another, after another, after another, another, and do something with the individual items. That's perfect for so many things that we have to do at work because it helps us focus on individual items. So much for the focus mode. Now there is another mode and that mode is called network mode. What I'm trying to do with my work is I'm trying to explain complex things. In order to do so, I use videos as tools, I use text and I use images. And of course, the way to do that, the way to convey that message is to use analogies, to use ideas that already exist in your brain and in mine so we can connect. And the way to find those, I cannot use the focus mode because I'm not going through a list of items. I'm actually in a wide search mode and I can only do that when I'm out and when I'm moving. Let me give you another example. It's called objective contextualization. That's a concept that I invented and I think it's the most important skill of the 21st century. Now what does it mean? I think the most important skill of the 21st century is that each and every one of us better learn how to cope with what's happening inside of us and how we're dealing with all the influences of the outside world. So I had to show what I actually mean. I had to show what this difference means. So I went for a walk and then I first stopped here because there are a couple of rails where I could show the interaction and the training and the practicing with the old world, if you will. Because it's very structured, it's very streamlined, and so also the interaction is pretty generic. But the way I think it works today is that everything that's happening around us, the way the world works today, means that we all have to find a way to cope with what's happening around us in a more complex way. And that's when I went right here, because there are a couple of stones and the interaction with those stones is entirely different compared to the rail, because the rail is very structured, is very old world, as I would say, and the way you interact with those stones is the way that I believe objective contextualization works. And this is how the network mode of the brain works. In the network mode, I will have a couple of ideas in my brain just wandering around and then I can go for a walk, I can take a shower, I can do whatever that doesn't have to do with this list kind of interaction with the world. And walking has proven to be one of the best ways to actually achieve that. 
many of the great thinkers of the last 100 or 200 years, they used to go on very long walks because that's where they had their best ideas and that's where they came to their inventions and their innovations. I'd like to encourage you that the next time you're looking for a creative idea, you have something that you want to bring to life. Put on your shoes, leave your studio, leave your desk, leave your workspace and start walking. There's another really famous quote about what happens when you walk, which is by Werner Herzog, one of my favorite filmmakers, who said, the world reveals itself to those who travel on foot. And he really meant it in a very radical sense. He mean, really meant going traveling because when he was young, one of his friends fell sick and then he said, I'll come visit you, don't die. <laughs> and he then walked from Munich to Paris in a couple of weeks. So he didn't just go for a walk outside his studio, but he actually went all the way from Munich in Germany to Paris in France. And ever since, he's confident that <laughs> this actually makes sense. And I think this can also happen on shorter walks. If you open your eyes, if you look around and actually see the things that the world reveals to you. And I strongly believe that the world can become a better place if we all walk more often. If we take the time, get away from this, open our eyes, open our minds and see what's happening around us. Because so often we get lost in social media. We get lost in the things that appear to us online. But when we actually go out and look what's happening right in front of our door, I think we'll have better ideas and the ideas that we have will have an impact on what's happening around us. And I think that would be awesome. <laughs>